Let's begin with prayer. My Heavenly Father, I thank you. My Heavenly Father, let the power of my Lord be great. Father, let the power of my Lord be great. Open our eyes that we can see. Open our ears that we can hear. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia that we can attend unto the things which are spoken. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will turn with me to John 5, verse 30. I'm going to do a little bit of background first. John 5, 30. This is Jesus speaking. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. We've read this verse before, but let's take a look at it again. I can of my own self. This is Jesus the Messiah speaking. I can of my own self do nothing. Nothing. Jesus could do nothing. He said, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Jesus only did the will of his Father. Now turn to John 14, verse 10. Jesus again speaking. He said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Do you see that? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Jesus didn't speak his own words. He said, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Not only does Jesus not speak his own words, he only speaks the words of the Father. He only does the works of the Father. The Father worked through Jesus. Jesus didn't do it on his own. Now that we know that, Jesus didn't speak his own words and he didn't do his own works. Turn with me to Matthew 15. Jesus, I'm going to begin in verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast, same coast, and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. He came crying out after him. And look what Jesus does. This is the Messiah. He only speaks the Father's words, and he only does what the Father tells him to do. But Jesus answered her not a word. Ignored her. The woman came crying out after him, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. He ignored her. He said, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried out after us. But he answered and said, Jesus said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You see, he's doing the Father's will here. He's not speaking to the woman because the Father didn't send him to her. In fact, he said, I'm not talking to her. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's going to ignore her. Now, what does she do? Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Help me. And Jesus again is trying to put her away. He said, but he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. He's telling her here, you're a dog. I'm not going to help you. Why? Because he only did what the father told him to do, and he only said what the father told him to say. So he's not going to help the woman. What does she do? And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Do you see? Oh, and it says, and her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Do you see here that that woman, that woman was able to change the mind of God? Do you see? She not only changed Jesus' mind, she got God's attention and she changed 
God's mind. You see what she did? She changed the mind of God. Do you know we can do the same? Turn with me to 1 John 3, 8. It says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Do you got somewhere the devil's works? Do you have some works of the devil that you've got to get rid of? Do you have some works of the devil that you've got to get rid of? Do you know that you can get it done? Do you know just like the Syrophoenician woman? You know what's neat about the Syrophoenician woman? She didn't take no for an answer. She didn't take no for an answer. Jesus said, I'm not helping you. She didn't take no for an answer. And you know what happened? When she refused to take no for an answer, she changed the mind of God. Smith Wigglesworth tells a wonderful story. He was sent to a 12-year-old girl to pray for her. She was dying of tuberculosis. She was near death, very near death. And he sent there, he so when he got there, it was evening. He sent the family to bed. He said, you're all going to bed. I'm going to pray for her alone. He said he didn't need any doubt and unbelief. He sent them all to bed. He said he prayed from 11 o'clock to 3 a.m. in the morning, and he said it was like the heavens were brass. He said it couldn't get through. He could not get through. And he said at the end of about 3, 3.30, he said he looked at the child, and she died. She breathed her last. She died. Smith left there with a dead child. You know what Smith said? He said, I'm not taking no for an answer. He said, it's time, to take, it's time to change strength. He said, I am not taking no for an answer. And he kept praying. He said, the heavens were brass. He couldn't get any, he couldn't get any help from God. But he said, I'm not taking no for an answer. You know what happened? He looked up at the window at one point, and there was Jesus. Jesus himself. Why? Because he didn't take no for an answer. He didn't take no for an answer. So you know what happened? Jesus looked at the child, and the life came back into her, and she was totally healed. Totally healed. Got up the next morning, got dressed, 12 years old, went to the piano and started playing to wake her family up. Can you imagine the family's face, their hearts, when they woke up to their daughter alive and totally healed? You know, several years ago, a couple now, time goes by fast. I was driving here from the church back to our house. And while I was driving on the road, a student of mine came up in my heart, one I hadn't thought about in a while. But the power of God was there in my heart while I was praying, and I went to the father. I knew the father was giving me the child's name. I said, don't forget this child. I said, you can't forget him. I said, you cannot forget this child. You can't forget him. You gave him to me as a teacher. You can't forget him. You know what I found out hours later? The same time I was standing in front of the father saying, you can't forget him. He was trying to commit suicide. They found him. He didn't die. He didn't die. In fact, he is well, and he has a family. Why? Because I made sure that God wouldn't take no for an answer. You can do the same. Turn with me to my last verse. Hebrews 4. I'm going to read in verse 14 or begin in verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, your high priest, somebody you can talk to. He said, seeing that we have such a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. If you need help, don't take no for an answer. If there is something that is between you and God, don't take no for an answer. If you've got the devil working his works in your life, don't take no for an answer. It says, let us hold fast to our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. That means he's felt what we feel. But is in all points tempted like as we are, 
yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace. You come boldly under the throne of grace. Why? Because of you? No. Because of what Jesus did for you. You come boldly into that throne room, not because of what you are, but what Jesus did for you. He justified you. He redeemed you from the powers of the devil. He uh, bore your sins. His blood justified you. You have every right to go into the throne of grace and boldly go in and don't take no for an answer. If it is on the cross, it's yours and you don't have to think about it. If he's already bought it for you, you don't have to wait for an invitation. You come boldly under the throne of grace, just like the Syrophoenician woman did. And she got when she came for her. 